recording. All right, YouTube, today we're here for round three of the, of the challenge. I lost my last round to a tight max against Rix's control. Um, kind of stopped game one. I put a lot of emphasis on putting pressure on them to get them down to two life so that I could hit a bolt to win while we both had nothing. And essentially, I just bricked on bolts for, I don't know, probably five or six turns. Didn't get it. I had four left in the deck, which kind of uh, pretty much of a bummer. Game two was a good drawn-out affair where I got it. And then game three, I got cheesed by a Blood Moon. So I was pretty bummed that I didn't win uh, game one. Game one, I, oh, I felt like it was mine to lose. So... Uh, one and one. First, this is the first. This is round three. I right, would like to play first. Oh, this guy's pretty good. It needs a threat. It's, it's actually, it's, it's like not that good, but it's like you're not going to mulligan this hand, I don't think. Like, we're going to go Underground Sea Ponder to start. We've got cards that are good against unfair decks, cards that are good against fair decks. Like, we're not going to get Chalice out of the game. If I knew what we were playing against, we might hold Pierce. But I don't, I think it's too, like if they just wasteland me, it feels bad. Okay. Um, I'm going to stack this like this, draw the land, and then hide the Pyromancer. And then hopefully I get a little bit of information. What's going on here? Okay. So this could be anything. This could mean we're playing a Delver Mirror. This could mean we're playing against uh, Grixis. I think because of this, I'm just going to Wasteland them. Chooses to shuffle. Okay, so they shuffle. So, okay, we're playing against um, Sneak and Show. So because of that, I'm just going to Waste them. And we draw Thoughtseize next turn. So if we don't get killed here. I'll hold this fetch land. I'm gonna spell. Oh, it's a fluster storm. Gross. But I played my land. We could have cast it. Okay. All right. Play the land. Oh, where my land? Oh, no, I wastelanded. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I thought I had to play a land spell. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to spell pierce it. Spell pierce it and hope. Okay. We have a dead gone in our deck if they put in an, an omniscience. Okay. So I only have one more card. Uh, we're just gonna. I don't think we're gonna hold force of will. We need to get the beatdowns on. We don't need any of the any of this stuff anymore. Tilt. I'm gonna hold that because we might have to march our way up to force of will. I'm definitely gonna bolt them in a turn. We gotta kind of hope they brick here. If it counts the brick. That doesn't count as a brick. Okay, so they must have bricked and they don't have a way to shuffle. Because like if they hit more cantrips, they would have just kept cantripping. All right, they hit a spell pierce. Okay. Okay, should I hold? I'm going to hold this Delver to uh, pitch the Force of Will. Okay. 
All right, that's a good one. Let's just I'd like to make this lethal next turn. One, two, three, four, five. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, dude, kill me. This is a, they know what this card is. It was the last card from their Force of Will. All right. Just put enough pressure on them to, to hold them off. So we want Pyroblast, Red Blast, Surgical. I like Surgicals because we have Discard. The Edicts might not be good, but let's get rid of True Names too slow. Um, Gurmag Angler's too slow. Um, we're going to cut a land. The Edicts kill Emrakul. They can kill Gristlebrand. Mob is not good. Probably the Edict. Probably the Edicts and the Dead God are better than a Lightning Bolt. Uh, we want Click, actually. So maybe I ditch this Dead God. Which is better, the Dead God? Like, the Lightning Bolt's... Lightning Bolt's probably not great. Because it doesn't shorten the clock enough. I think I would like to keep my Wasteland. Yeah. Because, like, sometimes Wasteland, you just get them. I could probably have to keep this hand. We could get browned by something like a, excuse me. We could get, like, we could just get overpowered, but. Play around stifle. They're doing things at very odd times. Like they're pausing in my upkeep here. It's like they're trying to get me to click through my turn or something. Or they're double queuing. Either could happen. What are you doing, opponent? Yeah, they're probably just double Q in. Or trying to get me like click through my turn one or two. I'm just gonna turn off all my auto yields just to make sure that doesn't happen. This is just quality entertainment here, baby. This is what I'm talking about.
<clears throat> this is great. This is fantastic. I kind of want to restart Moto just to make sure that it's not me. I think I'm going to. So let's just put on. I'm just going to restart Moto just to make sure that it's not me. Appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out today. My name is Dylan Hovey. I'm a part of the Card Horror Network. Um, right, here's Moto. Just going to restart. I'm part of the Card Horror Network here. I write for MTG Corner, um, a store in upstate New York called Gamer Craze, where I learn to play Magic. So you should check them out if you're available. If you want to contact with me, you can check me out on Twitter, which is linked below. Even if you're on YouTube, it's linked below. And if you ever miss part of the stream, you can check it out on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, you should head over to the stream, like that as well. The best way you can support me is to just subscribe to my stuff on Twitter, on YouTube. Like I'm, I'm slowly moving close to getting that uh, the amount of subscribers to be able to apply for monetization. I think I need less than 200, so if we can get some great. Some of you great people to be part of those 200. That would be excellente. Um, yeah, I would appreciate that. All right, we're loading back up here. So let's put this back, back up here. Oh, this is so annoying. Like they're probably just double queuing. All right, so let's let everything catch back up here. All right, so we drew an edict, which is good. It appears it was not us. Okay, you got it. That's totally okay. Force of will, pitching, probably click. And now we're, we are digging for a wasteland. A young pyromancer works as well. So let's go. Pyro, Pierce, Pyro, play our land. We can fluster storm if we need to. If not, we're just going to untap. I think I want to fetch. Well, no, I want this bell, Pierce, because I want an answer to, um, to whatever it is to. I can't think. I want an answer to sneak attack. I don't want the second pyromancer. So I'm gonna end up fetching fetching it away. Yeah, I thought it was kind of unfortunate, but decided that it was good to pitch the click. Okay, you got it with the old preordain, sir. So we're going to get a red source. How aggressive do we get here? We probably don't. Maybe it was.
was right to not do it then. I kind of wanted to hit a land drop. So they have Blast. So they have Blast and Force of Will to get us here. That's nice. Okay. So I could just take this Pyroblast, but if they draw a blue card, they just jam Sneak Attack. I think I could also take Bristlebrand. They beat Show and Tell, we can't beat that because they put Gristlebrand into play. This Pyroblast is going to be very annoying, though. I kind of want to take. Because uh, these are both combo pieces. I kind of want to take Gristlebrand. Because, like, if I take Gristlebrand and they draw a blue card. Ice Bell Pierce this. They go Force plus Blue card. Their, their hand's Pyroblast. If I take Sneak Attack and they draw Show and Tell, they hit me. I think I'm going to take Gristlebrand because I can beat an Emrakul. Why is Dead God in my deck? It bounces, uh, oh, it doesn't bounce Emrakul, does it? Okay, so they hit a Spell Pierce. So they did what we did. I thought this bounced Emrakul. <clears throat> but, no, I made that mistake. Okay, so now I can play, I can Wasteland this. Which doesn't really do me a lot. I would have liked to draw that Wasteland the last turn. Yeah, no, I should have. I thought that the Dead Gone could bounce Emrakul. But after remembering it, after you brought it up, I'm like, it doesn't. Uh, I think I'm going to play PZ in Wasteland. Because, like, there's maybe there's a world where they need this mana. But I guess I could draw, like... Brainstorm and hold up edict, so I guess there's not really much point. Like, their hand's Pyroblast. Alright, so let's attack. Yeah, I fucked up with this for sure. For sure. They blast it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Well, so we couldn't beat... When I took Gristlebrand, we couldn't beat Show and Tell off the top. And we couldn't beat... We couldn't beat Show and Tell off the top. We couldn't beat a blue card. And if I took Gristlebrand, then we could Edict the Emrakul if they draw Emrakul. So, like, I thought that, like, this just being... And they don't have any more cantrips to find anything. Their hand would just be Pyroblast. That's why I did it. And I think we just attack and don't play the Pyromancer. So, the pyro playing the Pyromancer shaves a turn off the clock. Because they can no longer draw with Gristlebrand. But if they, if they hit with Gristlebrand, I'm just going to wait. Because, like, we we're going to go 3-3-3. Three, three, three. If we draw a spell, like, we can just edict them at the end of their turn. Well, we don't want to do that. But. Okay, we should be able to figure out something. Where, like, we go end of turn, dead our Pyromancer, and then daze it. So that it resolves and makes another token.
Okay, so here I think I go for it. So we're gonna hold priority. We're going to dead this. Yeah, I'm gonna just gonna go for it on this turn. So we're going to dead this. We're going to daze. We make an elemental. And we're not gonna pay for it. No. Okay, now we untap. And they need two things. You got it. Get another one. Oh. And they're gonna get to draw seven cards. Now we're dead, because they just block here. Like it only, I guess they can't really draw seven unless they hit that turn. Okay, so now they're just looking for it here. We beat an Emrakul. Whatever, like we beat Emrakul. We don't beat two creatures. They need to get Lotus Petal Dude. Supposed to waste Valk. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, you were you were right again. I, I messed up this in a couple ways. So what are they gonna do? They're going to flash in, like, another Gristlebrand. I mean, I'm just attacking. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to attack. You only got two more Gristle Rides left in the deck. Chase. All right. All right. I guess we're just going to. They can't. They can't draw cards though, which is nice. And now we're gonna waste this. Okay, they fetch. We're still like okay. I guess we no longer beat an Emrakul, so we're not okay. I should have played the Pyromancer. I'm forcing a cantrip. Why do we need to waste the fetch land before damage, right? Don't they just, isn't that the same thing? So they didn't get a shuffle. Oh, okay. That's another thing I made a mistake. I've, I've not played this game very well. I've not played this very well. So let's, again, we're just going to attack. And we're going to make sure that we have enough permanents to still be able to win through an Emrakul. So let's, one... One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So here, I just play Young Pyromancer and I wasteland this Valk.
Yeah. I'd like to go back to my Thoughtseize now. Okay, so when I thought seized him, when I thought seized my opponent, my opponent's hand was Pyroblast, Force of Will, Gristlebrand, Sneak Attack. At the time, okay, so at the time, when I thought seized them, I had two lands in play. I had a Spell Pierce. I had a Young Pyromancer. I had a Dead God. And I had an Edict. So they had four mana. So the reason that I took Gristlebrand instead of taking Sneak Attack was because I, I didn't have an answer. Because if they drew Show and Tell, they just blasted my Pierce, if they drew a blue card, then none of it, then they were going to force through the sneak attack or force something through later. And if they did do that and I took Gristlebrand, then that means their hand was Pyroblast if it resolved. So I thought that eliminating, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like think and concentrate. I'm not looking at chat now, but like I'll, I'll check it out in a second. I thought that by taking the Gristlebrand, Fighting over the sneak attack, I could then get. I could then, um, if I take the Gristlebrand, fight over the sneak attack. If I win or lose, my opponent's hand is Pyroblast, and that's it. Or Pyroblast, Force of Will, Unknown Draw. If I won, but if I won the fight, I probably won the game. So that's why I took the Gristlebrand, because I thought the Gristlebrand was the scarier card, because I could not defend them from getting it into play if they drew anything. If I take the Gristlebrand, then they might be able to resolve this, but they can't do anything. Okay, so let me look through here. Choke Blue Mill and Pyro will play around. We still be done. I'm not be done. Yeah, this will be strong cantrips. But maybe it was worth playing. I mean, yeah, magic's hard. Oh, Dead puts us a 15 if I force the cantrip. That's good. What is the 5% thing you want to hedge for? I don't think taking brand was a punt. Yeah. I thought that I thought that if I take gristle brand, that that I eliminated their best thing to get in to break the game over. I would have forced I would have forced the cantrip, yes. Because we knew that they didn't have any more that they didn't have a way to kill us at the beginning of the turn. All right, let me stop my